Greetings, fellow action figure connoisseurs, and welcome to another episode of Digital Caveman Presents Star Wars Wednesday. I, as always, am your host, the Digital Caveman, and today I will be presenting you with Star Wars, the Black Series, Droidica Destroyer Droid. Let's get into it! Let's start things off with a look at the packaging. And here we have on the top a nice big window there, some tape, a hook, and that window lets some light in from the top so you can kind of see the figure on the inside there. Star Wars, the Black Series, nice big window showcasing the figure. And then here it says Star Wars, the Phantom Menace, Droid Akkad, Destroyer Droid, assortment number four and up, Hasbro print on the bottom, small print, fine print, legalese print, main China print, symbols I'm not gonna learn, and a barcode. On this side, all we have is some blank space, this stripe that continues around from the front up at an angle and then straightens back out and goes around the back. Star Wars the Black Series. On the other side, we have some nice artwork of the Droidica. And then at the bottom, Droidica, Destroyer Droid. And I really like that artwork. It looks really nice. On the back here, we have Star Wars the Black Series and a closer up view of that artwork from the side there. Droidica Destroyer Droid. Complete with twin blasters on their arms, Droidica. Our Destroyer Droids designed with one goal in mind, Annihilation. A Droidica can completely envelop itself in a globe of protective energy via its compact deflector shield generators. And then there we have it again in some other languages I do not read. He's number four in The Phantom Menace. And then we have warning attention, Octoon, don't stick things in any language pie hole that do not belong there. Don't give it to babies. Includes figure. And then we have small print, fine print, legalese print, main China print, Disney print, a stamped in number, and Hasbro print. That, my friends, completes our look at the packaging. Let's take a look at the figure and his, well, no accessories. So... I have to say, right off the bat, I think this guy cuts a pretty good silhouette of a droidica or destroyer droid, depending on which faction is calling them by name. Unless you're a clone, then it's just a clanker. And I, I really have to say, you know, I, I, I think there was a lot of engineering putting put into this guy I think maybe they should have consulted some with the Transformers team at Hasbro in order to get this guy's round transformation a little better I don't really care for it and I will try to to do it here but I cannot speak as to what the results might be. So, again, it's got lots of paint apps all over it, it looks like. And this looks like a paint app. We've got some paint apps here and here and here, here, here. The arms, not so much. This piece, yes. This piece, yes. The ball piece here, yes. The legs, not so much. Um, down here, we've got some silver there. And here and that goes for all the legs and you know lots of sculpted detail in this guy as well lots of hinges back here as well also let's talk about his articulation a little bit and right here the head piece it's on a very small ball and it tilts up and down like this it will spin around it will it's got some waggle no chicken neck though 
So it does do the full exorcist. I just showed that. However, the ball is, I don't know if it's weak or worn or what, but it doesn't take much to get the head just to, to kind of droop. I'm barely apl applying any pressure here. So, there is that. At the shoulders, the arms raise up that far at these shoulder joints. Now, there's some other joints in here that are like butterfly joints, but they're mostly for transforming into the ball form or the roller form. So it goes back that far and it will go forward that far. Also, there's a little bit of up and down in it, but I don't think that's intentional. I think it's just loose. So at this shoulder joint, it will also rotate somewhat. You see these wires are connected to it so because of that it only goes up that far and back uh, to about that far so there is that so some of the sculpt is limiting on it it also has a cut here at the upper bicep and it will swivel about that far again because of the cords and about that far because of the cords it does have this nice little piece here and it does move in and out at this first elbow joint and you get about 90 degrees worth of bend there and about that far before this piece pops out and it will pop out if you do overextend it so there's that and then there's another joint right here and it gives you that much bend up and about the same down so that's not bad so there's no rotation in here at all now it does have some waist articulation here sorta it's mostly for transforming into the roller form but it will lean forward and it will lean back so there's that now the legs are all pretty much the same except for the back one it doesn't have a hinge here, whereas these front legs, they do have a hinge and they will move back that far and up that far. Then at this joint, it'll go up that far. It'll go down that far. So, you know, it's a really good range of motion. And then it's also got a joint here and it'll go in that far and it will go up that far. And that's both of these front legs. And this one is pretty much the same. It's the same leg. And it, they do have rotation right here as well. And they will rotate 360 degrees. So the back one, it goes up that far. It goes down that far. And then this other joint in that far and up that far. So that, my friends, is a look at the figure and his no accessories, his articulation and whatnot. So, like I said, I will attempt to put him into his roller transformation. There's no true instructions on doing it. I don't know if it was actual intentional thing. I'm sure that it was designed into the figure, but because it's not great, they just didn't expand on it as much. So first of all, you have to slide the head in on this rail right here and then point it down. And this is the best I can figure. The two, I think these are the shield generators. They just fold up their own joints right here and they just fold in there. And then I wanna say you rotate this leg around like that maybe. And then the arms at this butterfly joint you just kind of fold them in and rotate the arms forward and fold them up kind of like this and again you know this is not it's not the greatest i watched one tutorial on this and even they were not real super <laughs> impressed with his ability to to go into a ball and I don't even think this is the official form I probably just 
this is, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so will it roll sort of? Kind of. But there it is, my friends. The droidica, or destroyer droid, or roller. Clanker. Clanker roller. Roller clanker. So there it is, my friends. As best as I could transform it into a ball. And there's a look at the figure, and it's no accessories as well. It's time for my favorite part of a review, comparisons. And here we have a Star Wars The Black Series Episode 1 Droidica Destroyer Droid with the Battle Droid and Clone Trooper 2-pack with the B1 Battle Droid and the Phase 2 Clone Trooper. For our final set of comparisons, here we have Star Wars The Black Series, The Phantom Menaces, Droidica Destroyer Droid, with from the Marvel Legends series making his cameo appearance, Stan the Man Lee from G.I. Joe Classified series, the Hasbro Pulse exclusive Regal Variant Cobra Commander, from Star Wars The Black Series, the Archive Edition 501st Legion Clone Trooper, and for a 7-inch scale comparison from the Masters of the Universe Masterverse line, the 40th Anniversary He-Man. For final thoughts on Star Wars The Black Series, Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, Droidica Destroyer Droid. I have to say this one is a little bit of a mixed bag. In my opinion, your mileage, of course, may vary. You may love it. And I don't hate it. But we've waited for a long time to get this in the Black Series. And it's a little bit on the disappointing side at least to me I would have much rather had other points of articulation and range of movement rather than them attempting to make it where he turns into his roller form or the rolling form whatever you want to call it and while I do think it was a good effort. It just wasn't quite there. So I think they actually should have gone with another version of this that, that didn't quite have all of that ball up engineering and just went for extra articulation and range of movement. At least that's how I see it. And overall, I'll have to say this is not a bad figure. It's not a bad version of the Droidica. I like it. I think it's appropriately sized. It does have really good articulation as it is. The small ball joint at the head is a little bit of an issue, at least on mine. Yours might not be loose there. Mine is, is kind of loose. And, you know, again, like I said, it's not a bad version and it has, it does have good articulation and, you know, I just maybe would have liked to have seen a little bit more range of motion on some of it or maybe some different points of articulation that they could have added rather than making it with the, the, the ball up gimmick. And which which honestly didn't work all that well. And why would you put that much effort into a figure and then not include some type of instructions with it saying, hey, this is it does this and this is how it does it. That's you know, that's a major point off in my book is the you know that's like buying a transformer that doesn't come with an instruction 
book. And I'm talking about like a masterpiece one. Not that this is, you know, Transformer masterpiece level or anything like that. But, you know, some of them are easy to figure out, and some of them aren't, and this one isn't great, so I don't know if they were intending, you know, hey, make up your own roller mode. Uh, that's the excuse they can make, but I honestly, I think it was just pure laziness on their part. The gimmick didn't quite work the way that they intended it to, and so they decided, oh, well, we'll just say it's make your own up, since what we designed wasn't quite there and we didn't feel like redesigning it before putting it into production at least that's that's kind of the feeling I, I get off of this and I know I probably did not do it justice as far as the transformation of it goes but I guess it is what it is but again the sculpt on this one looks really nice I and overall, I have to say, there's nothing really wrong with it. It just, I feel like the gimmick, the roller gimmick, didn't really work. And instead of fixing it before they put it into production, they just said, ah, to hell with it. And I, that's just my feelings on it. And I like this. I'm glad I finally have a Droidica in my collection I hope at some point they do go back and rework this to either a get rid of the rolling gimmick thing transformation altogether or to actually fix it so that it works properly one of the two I'd be fine with one that doesn't transform into a rolling ball and maybe instead like they did in the three and three quarter line there was a destroyer droid launcher little mini vehicle kind of like the old kenner mini rig kind of like in, in that similar vein and it launched it came with a rolled up destroyer droid of course it wasn't quite to scale but it came with a rolled up destroyer droid that did not unroll that was its only sole function was to be rolled up and there was a strap you pulled on the, the the vehicle part of it and the, the roller would come shooting out of it and roll before, of course, you know, it fell over. But, you know, I, I would rather have a piece like that than a frustrating lack of instructional figure that you know, they say it does this thing and then it doesn't white do exactly how you expect it to do and maybe that's just me and expectations but I wasn't expecting a destroyer droid that you know balled up anyway that's that's just me let me know how you guys feel about this drop a line there down in the comments you know, am I just making too much out of it? Am I not making a much out, uh, much out of it? Do you guys like it the way it is, like I do, for the most part? Or also, like I feel, feel like they could have done better. And, you know, of course, there's always room for improvement. Well, that does it for the review. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Only support from viewers like you make this programming possible. Issue does count, and I do appreciate each and every single view that I receive. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so very, very much for supporting this channel through viewing. If you are interested in supporting my channel further, I'm now offering memberships at various tiers. Click the Join button on my YouTube page, or check this video's description for the link, and see if any membership offers are right for you, but only if you were in a position to do so. Comment below, like, share, subscribe if you would like to see more content, or just help the channel grow, or both. That's even better. And don't forget to ding that bell so that in the future you will be notified as my new content becomes available. That's a wrap, folks. I'll see you next time.